Let's learn how to use the digital writer feature of NIMIDAG. Now before we get started here, consider the label for the DIO ports. It says 0 to 5. That's a reference to the maximum voltage range to apply as inputs. When used as outputs, they generate 0 volts for logic low and 3.3 volts for logic high. I have this demonstration circuit set up here with three LEDs and an incandescent light bulb. Now here I have the um, four different digital outputs connected to the lights. The digital ground is connected in common across all these LEDs and the light bulb. And I'm using a 330-ohm current limiting resistor for each of the three LEDs. Now the line states for the outputs are indicated here. You can choose which set of lines to write. You can do it in groups of four or you can choose all eight. And I'm going to, I'll use all eight for this demonstration. There's some various automatic patterns that you might be interested in looking at. I'm going to concentrate in this demo on the manual patterns. All right, let's go ahead and run this. So here I can individually adjust the state of each of the lines. So the three LEDs are on lines 0, 1, and 3. I'd also like to point out that you can, uh, if you're comfortable with hexadecimal notation, you can come up with an 8-bit pattern simply by manipulating that hex value directly. Once you have a pattern that you like, you could say uh, toggle all the switches at once. You can use the rotate feature. You can of course change the direction. And shifting is similar to rotating except if you're doing rotating, notice that this single active line is preserved through rotation. But when you shift, eventually when it hits the end, then that single uh, value disappears. All right, notice that I'm activating line six, and that's connected to the incandescent light bulb, but it doesn't seem like anything's happening on the bulb. To investigate that property just a little bit further, let me go ahead and set up the uh, DMM as a voltmeter. And I'm going to connect the uh, DMM probes into the circuit. And I've just, just added those here. So I have the common connected to the digital ground and the voltmeter side connected here. Now notice that as far as the LED is concerned, the voltage is pretty much at three volts. It's either zero or at three volts. And again, in a, for unloaded condition, it's uh, much closer to 3.3 .3 volts. And in fact, if I remove that LED, which would give us an unloaded signal, then we see we get very, very close to 3.3 .3 volts. So the most we get out of it is 3.3, .3, and when you load it a bit and draw some current from the output, then you're going to see the voltage drop a little bit. Now let's try observing the voltage across the incandescent bulb. This is a, a five volt incandescent bulb. And notice in this case, the voltage doesn't get above 0.3 volts. So an incandescent bulb is a pretty heavy load on the digital output. And notice again, when I disconnect that load, suddenly we're back to 3.3 .3 volts. So this idea of loading is important. You have, have to realize that you, you cannot drive very much current out of the 
digital output. All right. Last thing I'd like to mention is that when outputs are active and you stop the digital writer, notice that they persist in that active state. So it's a good idea when you're done, or just before you finish with the digital writer, set all of the output lines to zero before you stop the application.